By the time the Louisiana Purchase was completed in 1803, the land that became Missouri was already known for being a land of great and easy accessible natural resources. It was a land viewed by many as a place of opportunity and a chance at the American dream. Prior to America's largest land purchase since its birth, the Louisiana Purchase, the population of Missouri was around 3,500 people. A year after the Louisiana Purchase, that number was over 10,000. By 1820, on the eve of statehood, Missouri's population stood at over 40,000 people. This trend of upward migration after the 1820s continued at an astounding rate at an increase in population of over 17% a year on average for more than 40 years, so that by the Civil War, Missouri had a population of 1.2 million people. Not everywhere in the state experienced this level of population growth, however. Southeast Missouri was the exception to the rule when it came to population growth in Missouri. By 1820, there were few settlements in southeast Missouri lowlands, and most of those were along the Mississippi River. No one but the exiled Shawnee and Pawnee seemed to be able to live in the vast inland swamp, and even they did not stay for long, choosing to leave after the earthquakes of 1811. Of the land zoned as swampland, and the southeast Missouri lowlands made up the second largest swamp in the U.S., only the Gulf Coast region of Louisiana had more land covered than wetlands. Thus, drainage of the southeast Missouri lowlands would make it the largest land reclamation project in the history of the United States. Government policy reflected this negative view of swampland with the creation of three congressional acts directed at swamp drainage. This series of legislation was designed to rid the U.S. government of worthless swampland by giving it to 15 states, including Missouri. The states were supposed to sell the former federal lands and use the money to reinvest in drainage projects for reclamation. Missouri was one of the three states that violated this stipulation by giving their ceded land to the individual counties to sell. After the Civil War, with an absence of federal or state regulation, Farmers and land developers began to rely on independent drainage districts to drain land. Landowners that wanted their land drained had to petition the local and state governments for permission to create local drainage districts. These districts received funding from taxes on assessed land based on the value of the land once it was drained, not as swampland, angering landowners who believed the ground should be assessed as it was. With rapid land clearing during much of the 19th century, in most parts of the country, the Missouri Boot Hill remained a vast wilderness, one of the last American frontiers. Beginning in the 1870s, with the arrival of the Cairo, Arkansas and Texas Railroad, or Cat Line as it was widely known, work began on clearing the edges of the vast frontier swamp. While there was success in clearing some of the land, it did not address any type of drainage system to free up more swampland for farmland, a practice that locals knew was lucrative. Before the dawn of the 20th century, Otto Krasinski, the son of a Hungarian immigrant to the United States, went to New Madrid County, Missouri as a young county surveyor, where he became convinced that the Southeast Missouri swamps, a place he called the last frontier in America, hindered agricultural and social development. He believed that the land could be drained and the region opened up for settlement. Krasinski made it his dream to drain the massive Southeast Missouri swamp. He made maps with plans on how and where to construct canals. He taught land developers and railroad engineers how to build railroad beds on soggy ground and came up with a system of levees and ditches designed to drain the swamp into local rivers that took access water south where it eventually emptied into the Mississippi River. For his efforts in draining the last frontier in the U.S., the Sykes and Daily Standard newspaper labeled Krasinski the father of Southeast Missouri drainage. Krasinski pieced together a plan for drainage in 1909 that consisted of a diversion channel to divert water from the Ozark Creeks to the Mississippi River, avoiding the lowlands, and a system of north-south ditches to drain the water south. Members of the newly formed Little River Drainage District looked at Krasinski's plan with doubt. Crews were brought in on the newly built railroads 
that began to pop up and penetrate deeper into the swamps. They formed camps of timber cutters, haulers, dredge line crews, and began their work reclaiming America's last frontier. Using new technology, often invented on the spot out of necessity. Crews worked feverishly throughout the first two decades of the 20th century. The only slowdown occurred during the Spanish influenza of 1918 that shut the whole crews down and killed hundreds of workers and their families. Tree by tree, one frontier was being destroyed so that another could emerge. As more and more farmland was created and lots were sold, the land became available for tilling before there was enough labor to till it. Newspapers advertised in southern Indiana for people there to come to southeast Missouri where the land was cheap and the soil was rich. Whereas before the Civil War, the vast majority of migrants to southeast Missouri came from the south. After the war, the vast majority of migrants came from the north because of the advertising blitz of southeast Missouri land companies. For the first time ever, southeast Missouri saw a more diversified population. Now that is, they build us a house, give us possession of the land, 40 to 80 acres, depends on the size family, and we had to make our way, but they give us one year free of interest to get us started. No down, no payment. The most radical social transformation of the region as a result of reclamation, was in the influx of African-American farmers, both as farm labor, sharecroppers, and landowners. Large farms required large amounts of labor. Even on the dawn of mechanized farming, farm laborers were still needed, especially in the production of cotton. While cotton was grown in limited quantities before the war, it wasn't until the 1920s, when drained land was converted into cotton fields, that the region really defined itself as a cotton region. Landowners sent agents to the Deep South to recruit African Americans for labor in Southeast Missouri. The reclamation of the Southeast Missouri lowlands transformed the region from a wilderness of unused land to inhabitable for long-term settlement into a boomtown atmosphere with fast growth in both population and in economic prosperity. Towns sprang up through the entire region, roads were improved, and when rural populations in other parts of the country were shrinking, Southeast Missouri grew in population. From 1910 to 1930, the population of the Boot Hill counties grew by 40%. By the end of World War II, the frontier that had been the great Southeast Missouri swamp was gone, transformed into the breadbasket of America. The dictionary defines frontier as two things, the extreme limit of settled land by which a wilderness lay beyond, which certainly applied to Southeast Missouri. The second definition states that a frontier is the extreme limit of understanding or achievement in a particular area. Before Krasinski's drainage plan was complete, he not only designed the largest reclamation project in the United States, he pushed the limit of mechanization with his shallow floating dredge boats and a system of drag lines to remove dirt quickly. The great Southeast Missouri drainage project of Otto Krasinski transformed one frontier into another. It created some of the most nutrient-rich farmland in the world diversified the population, and brought the region into the modern era. It ushered in social movements, such as the Sharecropper Strike of 1939, which led to the Demo Housing Project, which eventually led other federal agencies moving into the region. Federal involvement led to social programs, such as the Prochera Program, which further diversified the people of Southeast Missouri by bringing migrant workers from Mexico to work on farms. In 2021, the land once called the last American frontier produced over 300,000 acres of cotton, over 350 acres of wheat, over a million acres of corn, 2 million acres of beans, and over 200,000 acres of hay. Today the area once covered in swamp is home to 137,339 people, made possible by the efforts and achievements of Otto Krasinski and the Little River Drainage District. In the 1960s, Missouri and the federal government began to realize that it should preserve what few intact wetlands remained in southeast Missouri. Places like Mingo Wildlife Refuge, Duck Creek State Park, Big Oak Tree State Park, and Otter Slough State Park were preserved as windows for future generations to see what southeast Missouri once looked like when it was a frontier. <laughs>